All right, good evening. Uh, thank you for being here to hear about the Master of Science in Business Analytics. Uh, the session is being recorded, uh, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over the agenda. Um, we'll go through introductions, uh, talk about what is business analytics, the learning goals of the program, modality and program length. We'll also go over the curriculum overview, uh, just talking a little bit about the classes, detailing what the CPT and OPT would be like for international students, talk about the admissions criteria to the program, cover financing your venue education, and what options might exist there. A few details about what it means to say becoming an Eagle, so what other offices uh, we have on campus here to support you. Uh, staying in contact, giving you my contact information, and then covering some Q&A. Uh, so who we are, I'm Jenny Jeske. I'm the uh, uh, sorry, Assistant Director of Admissions for Graduate and Doctoral Programs. So we're really happy to have you here. Uh, I'm glad you're interested in our business analytics program. And I also have with me uh, Dr. Barbara Ozog. She is the Associate Dean of the Goodwin College of Business. Uh, she's mm -hmm. also the program director for the uh, business analytics program and, of course, a professor in information systems. Dr. Ozog has an MS and a PhD from Northwestern University in industrial engineering and management systems. So we're glad you're here. Thank you. Glad to be here. So let's get into it. The first question we want to ask, you're here to learn about the program, a Master of Science in Business Analytics. So, um, you know, you might have some some things you know about this degree, you may not. Uh, so from your perspective, Dr. Ozog, what is business analytics? Um, business analytics is a way to look at data and to discover information, discover, um, to glean information from that data. You know, if you just have a pile of receipts, you know, that's sort of interesting, but then you can aggregate them, for example, and then you realize, oh my goodness, I spent so much at Starbucks and I spent, you know, so much at, you know, at Jewel and so much at Walmart. Well, think about an organization. What, uh, there's lots of data floating around. If it's um, in retail, you know, who are your best customers? Um, you know, might be a very important question. Um, you may want to offer something to your best customers that you're not going to offer to, you know, um, not so good customers. So business analytics is sort of both an art and a science. Um, the art is sort of the, uh, are the business questions uh, to ask, to try to figure out what it is that we want to know. And the science are all those tools, statistical tools primarily, uh, to figure out, you know, those answers to those questions. And so how is it, if you're, you know, the word data is out there a lot. So there's different programs like data science, data analytics. Um, how does this program differentiate itself from that? Um, data science is um, a little more theoretical and it's really intended for those individuals who, um, want to, for example, develop the tools that um, those of us in business analytics are going to use. So that's really the distinction. Business analytics is for those individuals who are going to ask the questions and look at the data, whereas data science is a little more on the theoretical side, almost in the developing of the tools. Got it. So if we move on to the learning goals of this program. So students who successfully complete this degree program should be able to do four things. And these are the learning goals that we have outlined in um, mm -hmm. on the website, in the course catalog. So, you know, they're important. So there's demonstrate leadership and ethical decision-making in situations that may be structured, unstructured, and or ambiguous. Demonstrate quantitative and qualitative skills in analyzing business problems integrate information technologies with data science methods to extract value from data. And then lastly, communicate the results of the analysis in written, oral, and visual ways to a variety of audiences, technical and non-technical. Uh, I think that last one there, I find to be extremely important. And it also makes sense when you think about, uh, which we'll discuss in a moment, um, the courses that are involved in the program. So management courses paired with business analytics courses. Did you have anything that you would want to add about the learning goals? 
um, I think um, once we see the courses or when we don't have just business analytics courses, but as Jenny alluded to, we have management courses, those that help in terms of the leadership and ethical decision making. There's lots of um, lots of ways to kind of go astray when you learn lots of data about individuals. Um, that's something we don't want to do. Uh, we always want to use anonymized data. For example, in healthcare, the last thing we would want is to be able to identify individuals. Um, in terms of the qualitative and quantitative skills, we also have um, a management course in organizational behavior. So we want that those qualitative skills. Um, you know, how do how do organizations run? What does it mean to be you know a part of an organization? And what it, what does it mean to try to um, uh, implement uh, a certain program to start a program? So change management issues. Um, so integrating those information technologies, so organizational behavior. Uh, there's also a business intelligence course that that looks at change management, um, and then finally communicating those results. Uh, just about every course requires not only a written project, or some uh, you know written work, but also oral presentations. And you know while you think, oh my goodness, this is going to be intimidating. You know, um, I think we're all among friends. We're all among classmates. Everybody has those trepidations, but this is where we can practice. Um, and you know, a position isn't on the line, and we learn how to, you know, handle situations. Learn how to answer questions about what it is that we've discovered. And what is it that I, I know we have a pretty diverse student body? What does a typical you know, business analytics student in the master's program look like? What backgrounds do you see here? Um, I don't know that we have a typical student, but I have seen students who come out of technical areas, someone who's maybe come out of, um, you know, um, finance or accounting or even, you know, computer science, um, who is looking for more of the um, applied tools you know, learning to ask the questions that an organization, you know, needs to answer and then being able to apply the tools. Um, we also have students who come out of um, uh, a liberal arts um, major. Um, criminal justice, for example, um, the um, uh, Department of Justice, I mean, every federal and state agency generates lots of data. And so almost independent of where you are, you know, in, in whatever industry, or whatever field, uh, you might be um, business analytics, uh, you know, has a role to play. So we have students for, with liberal arts majors. We have students with technical majors. We have students with other business majors. Absolutely. Great. And that's something that as I speak with prospective students over time, I'm seeing that people from all kinds of backgrounds are interested uh, in hearing more about this degree. So healthcare, retail, technology. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's not just um, those with a science minded background either. Right. And I neglected to say, you know, even and, and, and those with you know science and health backgrounds. Um, in fact, uh, a couple early students um, who were look uh, were nurses who were looking for, you know, what do I do with this data? I know, you know, I have all this, I have access to data, but what do I do with it? And so, um, absolutely, independent of major. Um, data plays a great role. So when we talk about the modality and the program length, uh, what I like about this program is um, though it is a mostly on ground program, uh, it also gives the option for students to take courses online. So uh, whether you're online or on ground, the program is completed in a little bit over two years based on current scheduling uh, when you take one class per eight week session. Uh, and we offer them at different start dates. So feasibly a student could start in the fall, spring or summer. Um, the only caveat I would have to that is uh, if, it, if you're an international student, uh, regulation wise, you do have to start at the first session of fall or spring. Uh, so the next one would be uh, for everybody would be for January 17th. And I'll touch on that later. Uh, so all the business analytics core courses are offered in person on campus. The building you see there is 
the Goodwin College of Business, where I'm located right now and where the classes take place. Uh, we have, uh, it's an amazing building, very large, new. There's a uh, trading lab, several high-tech classrooms with um, technology capabilities. It's very interesting. Uh, so if you break it down, and I'll show you the course listings next, you'll see that there are three foundation courses, accounting, analytical tools for management decisions, and org behavior. Those three classes can be taken online. So you don't have to come to campus to take those. That, that offers you that flexibility. Uh, the core courses, all of the Balt ones are in person. And those three additional management courses are also available online. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's what the curriculum looks like there. Then across any program in the College of Business at the master's level, students have an option to pursue a concentration. So currently we offer four concentrations. There's change management, digital marketing, uh, it should be project management and talent management. Uh, what's nice is if you were to pursue talent management or project management, uh, you'd have an option to uh, only have to take one more class to complete it because some of the courses are already in the curriculum, which is kind of nice. Uh, I was wondering if you uh, could maybe speak about a little bit about the management courses that students take. Uh, sure. Um, the um, okay. I've already mentioned uh, there's a ethics and leadership course. Okay, that's very important because um, again, you know, we have access to data in ways that I think you know if we if we aren't careful, we can you know pinpoint individuals, and that is absolutely not something we 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 can do. So leadership um, uh, and ethics. Uh, we also have organiz well, that's uh, on the foundation side is organizational behavior. Um, but we also have um, uh, business intelligence. Um, and uh, you know, and you might think, well, gee, why is that not a business? Uh, why does that not have a prefix of business um, analytics, but rather it's a management course. And the reason for that is that um, we also deal with change management in that course. So how do we um, implement something? You know, in, in any organization, transitions are hard. And when you have to, you know, when, when we're asked to do something in a different way, or if we're asked to do something new, that's hard for, you know, for people sometimes. Uh, and so those change management um, uh, techniques and how do we, um, convince, persuade, um, how do we implement? So um, that's uh, some of what goes on in, 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 in those other courses. Great. And I know there's also a project management class. Uh, that seems very yes. relevant. Pro everything we do is a project. Um, and it doesn't have to be an analytics project. It can be all kinds of other projects. But projects need to be defined. They need to have a scope. Um, and there are all kinds of uh, um, well-known techniques for um, not only organizing, but then managing that project. And so uh, that's absolutely critical. And as Jenny pointed out, that could lead to a project management um, concentration. Yes, and what's nice about that is there's even an additional uh, class that can be taken, it's optional, um, but it's one that helps if you're anywhere close to sitting for a certification. Uh, exactly. It's project management, I think 6603. So that might be um, something other people would wanna look into. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we talk about the courses, we see what's in front of us. Can you describe a little bit about um, what the deliverables are, particularly for the business analytics courses that are in person? What does the typical class assignment look like? Yeah. Um... Depends a little bit on the course. However, uh, well, in um, a, a relatively new co course in our um, curriculum is uh, the first BALT course that's in the in the core. And that is actually a programming course. It's the 5,000 level course. And you may think, oh my goodness, programming. But as it turns out, lots of what uh, is being done in, um, in analysis, in analytical tools, is being done in either uh, a programming language called R or Python. And so you may have heard those terms and that's what we want to um, be sure 
that students are aware you know, of, of those techniques. Um, so there it's, um, you know, some programming assignments um, you know, to, to, you know, use some data, you know, get some output uh, and things like that. Uh, in most of the other courses, um, it, they're project-based. So, you know, there's some scenario, um, there's a, a database and a data warehousing course, for example. So there may be some, you know, smaller exercises, weekly exercises that um, are on specific pieces of the topic, but also larger projects that might inv involve two parts, like something that's due at the midterm, something that's due at the final, um, to, to, to show that you've understood the material. Um, and as I've mentioned already, uh, not only written work, but presentations. So, uh, so we have that. Um, and then depending a little bit on the course, there may be some um, uh, case studies to analyze. Uh, there may be some scenarios, some business situations to look at, um, to comment on. There may be um, article reviews, for example, um, you know, looking at current literature or even, you know, more current events in the sense of, you know, what are some of the success stories using business analytics? Or for that matter, what are some of the not so success stories, you know, uh, where lots of money might have been spent, um, but there are no results to show for it. Those are always trickier because no one wants to admit that, but there are, you know, project failures and we can learn at least as much from the failures as we can from the successes. So those are some of the deliverables. Great. And what is the biggest difference between, um, I guess you would say the online course deliverables versus in person? Does everything use the D2L? Oh, yes. Every, every course uses a D2L uh, course shell. Absolutely. So the content is either included right in D2L or is linked via D2L. Uh, so there may be links to articles and links to um, you know journals and things like that. Uh, but uh, D2L is sort of the um, kind of the, the common uh, the common tool across all our programs across all our courses. Great, and that's something that uh, once you're admitted as a student, you have access to uh, to the classroom. Uh, that way. And so, and that's something we go over in orientation too. Mm -hmm. So talking about uh, course waivers. So we've kind of discussed how the program works, what classes are involved. Uh, so course waivers are something where um, when you go to apply to the program, which we'll cover shortly, uh, we, I take a look at your uh, official or unofficial, whatever you have a copy of. I can take a look at your transcript, basically let you know um, if you might have the ability to waive one of the foundation courses. So it would either be accounting, org behavior, or the analytical tools for management decisions, the business statistics class. Um, and what I do is take a look at when were the classes taken, uh, what grade did you earn, and then um, does it meet the standard of what we're looking to waive it for? So for instance, uh, accounting usually requires you to have taken two accounting classes, usually financial accounting or managerial accounting, uh, and same for the business statistics. So I could look at that uh, and let you know as a prospective student whether or not you might waive that. And if you're able to, not only does it save you time, but it also saves you money um, when it comes to the total cost of the program. Uh, if you're an international student, that would still apply. The main difference is, is that I would just have to have a um, official transcript that's been evaluated by education credential organization. Mm -hmm. um, so touching on a little bit about something that would affect international students is the CPT and OPT. So um, since this is a STEM designated program, it allows students, international students, uh, a little more time to work while they're in the U.S. Uh, typically as an international, international student, um, you have to typically hold a uh, job on campus, so you, a student worker position. Um, but this allows you as an international student to work a little bit longer. I believe it's a 24 month extension that happens after the program, giving you um, more experience and chance to do that. Dr. Ozog, could you speak to how uh, maybe you've seen international students in your program um, and there may be a sample of their experience with this in the past? Um, I can certainly speak to the uh, CPT, the Curricular Practical Training. Um, for 
um, U.S. residents and U.S. citizens, um, you know, uh, uh, um, those students are eligible for internships, for example, uh, or you may already have, um, a, a, you know, a full-time job. Well, the international student doesn't have quite that opportunity except in these categories. So the curricular practical training um, allows that international student to, um, uh, to you know, earn some, uh, to earn a bit of a salary, but also to gain that experience that otherwise he or she would not be eligible for. And similarly, after the program is completed, that OPT, that optional practical training, um, gives the student an opportunity to practice those skills um, in, work, in a workplace. And that may lead to full-time employment, or it's a stepping stone to you know, other kind of, um, to, to another uh, position. Um, and, um, you know, private organizations, um, whether they, they, they might be um, not so much government agencies, but certainly, um, you know, private companies or publicly held companies um, will um, hire an international student in this CPT or OPT category. Great. And we do have a uh, IPS office and people who work in it who can answer the questions related to this, uh, especially as your program goes along and after you're admitted as a student. So um, I know something like this is very valuable to students. So um, I, I like to talk about it and let, let them know it exists. Absolutely. So, if we talk about uh, the admissions process, so at the graduate level here, uh, we review the applications on a rolling basis. So this means um, every session that courses are available, students typically have until the point of courses starting to enroll. However, our deadlines are usually about a week before the start date, just to ensure the student has everything they need in order, mm -hmm. um, ability to get books, if they're doing financial aid, all of those things. Uh, so I'd say one week before the start date is what we look for. Um, when you apply, you need to go on to the website. So the website's listed there and select the application for the program you're interested in. And what we'd like with it is a goal statement. So I would always say two to three double space pages uh, detailing why you're looking to apply to the master's program that you're selecting and how it would help you achieve your academic and personal goals. Uh, you'd also want to attach a current resume. Uh, and two letters of reference. So when you fill out the application, it asks you to list uh, someone who would vouch for you on your behalf. It could be academic, it could be professional, and you just put in their name and email. They are sent a online survey uh, to answer questions that relate to what is your ability when it comes to writing, things of that nature. Or if they don't wanna do that, they could just attach a written letter of reference. We also ask for your official transcripts. Uh, so that way we can evaluate if you have potential course waivers, uh, but also have your full academic record and history on file. So you'd wanna indicate any institutions that you've attended, put it down on the application and make sure that those official transcripts are received by us. For international students, it's the same things above, uh, but we'd also need that course by course evaluation completed by one of the credential agencies listed. WES is a popular one. There's also ECE or Ed Perspectives. Uh, we also would need you to attach a recent um, photocopy of your passport. Mm -hmm. If it applies, the results of a TOEFL or I IELTS exam. And then um, the deadline to apply for international students is a little over a month before the start date, so December 12th. Uh, once you're admitted, like I mentioned, we do have people in the IPS office who would help you with the next steps in terms of processing your visa and I-20 documents. Oh, and just as a as a bonus, it says on there, so um, we do not require the GRE or GMAT. So a lot of colleges have taken more of what they call a holistic approach to looking at the candidate. So, um, you know, not I wouldn't say gone are the days of standardized test scores, but for us, that is not something we require. Um, we look at your goal statement, resume, and letters of reference, along with your cumulative GPA to kind of get a good snapshot of you as a candidate. So in going over financing options, um, the program itself uh, has different ways which it could be paid for. So when, when we talk about financial aid at the graduate level, and we encourage people if they would like to, uh, to apply for a FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, citizens and permanent residents can apply for this. 
um, that gives you the option to select uh, graduate student loans that are issued through the government. Um, we also offer interest-free payment plans run through our business office. If you are an employee of Benedictine, there are uh, employee discounts and tuition remission. And then if you have employer reimbursement, there are ways to have that applied uh, as you go through your program. We also offer select scholarships. So alumni, um, people who have earned a degree from Benedictine are eligible for a 25% off tuition scholarship, which is tremendous. Uh, a lot of our students choose to take advantage of that. If you're active or retired military, if you work for the government or a government entity, or if you're an uh, employee of a nonprofit agency, those are all, also scholarships we offer. And um, I could provide you with more information uh, about that after. So if we talk about becoming an Eagle, um, that's our mascot, Ernie the Eagle. Uh, what are the things that will help you be successful as a student? One of them is that each student at the graduate and undergraduate level is assigned a student success advisor. So this person is there for you to answer questions you have related to courses, scheduling, anything related to your academic life here. We also have an academic support center. So this is where uh, they offer certain types of peer tutoring. Uh, they cover things like uh, skills for academic success, like writing assistance, um, and graduate students can use it as well as undergrad. So I would, I would recommend checking that out. They're also the office that provides accommodations uh, if you qualify as a student. So if that's something that you're concerned about or have questions about, you could go there as well. We also have a very large alumni network. So if you check out that website, it's uh, our alumni uh, events page there, uh, you can see what's happening. Uh, and you don't have to be an alumni to, to check it out. There's always events on campus and things happening on the weekend. Um, one day our hope is that you would graduate and be an alumni and wanna contribute and participate in those events. What might be more uh, important is the Office of Career and Personal Development. So this office is actually one where uh, the director, he's great, uh, Matthew Johnson, could help you with any questions you have related to prepping for uh, interviews, resume um, building. Uh, and then what's also great is they offer something called uh, Career Connect. So they have a set of employers who agree to list their uh, positions on there. And then our students and alumni can use that to look for positions, which is great. So it's Definitely a place that I would recommend checking out, um, especially if you want more feedback on your LinkedIn profile, how you interview, your resume, things like that. So if you'd like to stay in contact, this is my contact information, uh, my phone number, email. Um, in addition to being the assistant director of admissions, I also uh, am the main recruiter for this program. So you could always reach out to me or scan the code to, to set up a time to speak. If you visit our graduate events page, that'll show you things that are coming up. It also lets you schedule a time to talk, uh, go on a campus tour, and then check out our other uh, upcoming graduate webinars. So uh, if we wanted to cover any questions at this time, I do see there, uh, there is a question about the end of the program. So does the program have a thesis or a capstone? Um, there is a capstone course. There's no thesis. Uh, the capstone course, um, I've mentioned already that uh, um, all our courses involve some kind of project. Well, this is absolutely a project-based course. Uh, the idea is maybe to expand on something that you've started you know, in another course. Um, I've had students sort of, you know, use not necessarily the same set of data, but rather um, they use the same company and use different data sets from that company. Uh, so they learn lots and lots um, about the organization as they go along. So um, there's no thesis. It's a capstone project based course. Is there any uh... I guess my question would be, what would be the advantage of having that versus like a, a paper thesis that you write? Um, I think the advantage is that you um, you it's it's hands on. You um, you work with data um, much like you would you know in a position as a business analyst, and so you know. Um, writing a paper is important. You know, you get to think about things. 
um, you need uh, you know to to research different you know ideas. Um, see what evidence there is for those ideas, what evidence there might be against those ideas. But um, I, I think what's very important is to be able to do something um, with the data that you're presented with. Um, ask, the, ask the questions that um, are relevant to, uh, to your employer and be able to address those. Another question I'm often asked although it's, uh, is, you know, what are the, uh, if we're thinking about the culmination of the degree, so the whole purpose of why the student is, you know, taking the time to come to class and do this whole thing, um, what are the, if they're looking for maybe a new role or uh, switching from what they're in currently, what are the types of positions or maybe job titles uh, that they could search for or potentially obtain after earning this degree? Okay. Um, so, uh, almost anything with the word analyst in the job title is something that um, that this degree, that this area of study would equip you to be. Um, certainly how, um, you know, how far along on that career, you know, how far up that career ladder you might, you know, um, be would depend on any previous background. Um, you know, for, uh, sometimes, you know, students, um, I, I've had students say, well, you know, should I look for a job outside my, you know, current employer or look internally? And my view is if you have a good relationship with your current employer, it might be a lateral move, but it may even be a promotion um, because that, that student already is, is of value to the organization. So I wouldn't, so I would also look internally, look inside the organization for a way to, uh, to, to make a move. Um, sometimes business analytics positions um, might be um, in some kind of, it might actually be in some information technology area. Uh, there might be a research division. Um, it really depends on the organization kind of where they are, but it may also be um, within marketing. If it's um, retail, for example, uh, you're going to have, you know, most of the data comes out of marketing. Um, if it's um, other kind of, you know, service or manufacturing, it may be, you know, it may be decentralized. One never knows about these things. Um, mm -hmm. So anything with analyst um, in the title, um, I would look at. Um, Great. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, and the other thing I always tell students and encourage them is like, you have the, uh, advantage of having this graduate program take place in person. So obviously seizing opportunities to network with other students and people you meet along the way. If you do get an internship opportunity, you know, say yes to that and um, and definitely just get to know people. And that's that's how, you know, a lot of people get to know what's out there. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that um... Uh, kind of uh, meeting people and learning about what others are doing cannot be overestimated. Um, uh, you know, having a, uh, the Office of uh, Career and Personal Development, for example, is very important because um, you may meet, uh, you know, um, your classmates uh, may become valuable, you know, colleagues in a, in a job search. Um, and, you know, others that you may meet at some um, um, <clears throat> networking event. Uh, you know, might become, um, uh, again, you know, helpful in a, in a potential job search. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here and covering all the important parts of the program. Uh, as I mentioned before, to anyone who's interested, the next session for spring is January 17th. Uh, so ideally, we'd get you, receive your information to apply by uh, January 12th or so. Feel free to check out the contact page and send me an email or schedule a time to speak. Thank you so much and everybody have a good evening.